Welcome back, wargamers and board gamers enthusiasts all over. This is another episode of my Kingdom Death solo campaign in which we will venture into the terrible dark world of Kingdom Death Monster and just see how long our settlement of Megrathia is going to last. As you saw in the last video, our survivors were just coming back from their, uh, their prologue hunt where they were waking up to the White Lion. They had to burn all... Well, you know what, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. Uh, let's just put it this way. They had a hard fight and they found other survivors and they've created their settlement of Megarathia. They have uttered their first words and they are ready to go out on their second hunt in which they are going to go after another white lion. So, let's go take a look at the board and see how the hunt goes. Before we begin uh, this uh, this particular session, though, I do want to quickly address uh, there are errors that you're going to see in this particular game. Uh, unfortunately, by the time I realized what had happened, uh, it was in post-production. So, unfortunately, though, those errors are there. Uh, I've made a note of a bunch of them, but uh, definitely leave comments below if you're watching and you see them as well. Any little reminder. Uh, but the, the biggest offenders uh, definitely came down to the proper implementation of ground fighting uh, for the White Lion, as well as some instances of uh, forgetting some, some, I guess, status effects and uh, game states for, uh, for either the survivors or the Lion itself. Um, so definitely some, some errors there. Uh, but like I said, I've made note of a bunch of them, and uh, hopefully going forward after this video, you guys will not see those errors again. So, you know, fingers crossed on that one. But as always, you know, leave some comments below uh, just so I know uh, I know you guys have caught it and whatnot. But uh, anyway, with that said, let's go check out the table. And we have our valiant survivors leaving the settlement. They have all named Magrathia, and they are ready to hunt a level one white lion right there. So the survivors we have leaving in the very front, we have the unkillable Li Zhu, decked down in full rawhide armor. We have Amy, we have Todd, and then we have, I just realized uh, I need another male survivor, so let's just swap her out for him. And we have Zephod. So these four are going to be going after the uh, after the white line. I have given a bone blade to both um, to both Amy and Todd. Uh, no weapons for uh, for uh, the unkillable Li Zhu, because uh, unfortunately I just did not have enough resources. But let's begin the hunt. We will start with Li Zhu moving uh, moving up on the hunt track, revealing the prowling lion. While the survivors stalk the white lion, the monster hunts something else. Move the white lion one space away from the survivors on the hunt board in pursuit of its prey. In addition, the white lion starts the showdown with, oh boy, ground fighting in play. So uh, I now have to add ground flight fighting to the lion. Uh, he moves back one, and the downside about this is that I have no ranged weapons to get the ground fighting off, uh, safely anyway, so uh, that's going to be a uh, rough first next turn. Up, we'll have Zephod going forward one, reveal the next hunt event. And we will get the White Lion Cub. The survivors find a White Lion Cub. They may choose to slay the cub. If they do, each survivor gains one random basic resource. The event revealer, revol re uh, reveals, revealer rolls on the table below. Ooh, okay. So do I kill a Lion Cub uh, and get the resources, or do I keep going? Um, if I spare the cub, I roll a random hunt event. Four resources are really good, and this is just a level one white line. So I think we're gonna do this. So we're gonna roll a d10, get a five. Result of four to seven, the father lion shows up, begin the showdown immediately. All right, well that's the end of the hunt, and we're gonna move right into the showdown. Before we begin the hunt, or the, uh, the actual uh, showdown, we're just gonna reveal what the four resources I got from slaying the white lion cub were. So we have a monster hide, a monster organ, a monster organ, and a monster hide. Dang, I was hoping for and them both. for this matchup, we have some terrain on the board. So we have tall grass to grant some extra evasion. We have a survivor corpse, which might allow me to find something useful. And we have some debris. So again, might be able to find something useful. Uh, really hoping for a 10 plus right there to grab a scrap sword, because that's actually a rather nice little uh, uh, weapon to have at this point in the game. We have the board set up. So we have Amy over here, and she's just starting off on the debris pile. The white lion in the center. We have Li, uh, Li Zhu the Unkillable uh, on the survivor corpse. 
and then we have both Zephod and Todd hiding in the grass. And as what happened uh, with one of the hunt events, we do have ground fighting in play, which is a mood. Basically what's going to happen is until one of the survivors actually gets within the zone of death, which is that blue box right there, he, the lion's not actually going to do anything. So that's actually going to give me a turn to collect these resources, which is good. And then I'm going to have to send somebody into that zone of death, trigger the white lion ground fighting, and um, yeah, basically hope for the best. So let's begin the hunt. Turn one, the lion isn't going to do anything, so we're going to jump right into the uh, terrain. We're going to start by having uh, Li Zhu uh, pull on the survivor corpse here, scavenge it, for a 7+, plus, which means he's going to gain plus 3 insanity and 1 skull basic he resource. He will then spend his movement action to go 1, 2, 3, 4, not quite getting into that zone of death just yet. That's going to bring us on to Amy, and we are going to do the same thing with the debris. We're going to roll a, a d10 here, and uh, once again, hoping for that 10 plus. Uh, I'll take a, uh, I'll take a seven or a nine as well, though, and we will get a five. Uh, so find useful remains, gain one random basic resource. So we are going to get another monster hide. She is then going to move up five. So one, two, three, four, five, and just get nice and close. And then these two fellas, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And staying out of that zone of death, uh, we are going to uh, let him stay on the ground and we're going to get our uh, bone sword users behind the lion. So Amy will go one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we will get, uh, yeah, we'll just get Lee Zoo to move back one like that. And we'll get uh, Todd to go one, two, three, four, five. And I guess Zephod, one, two, three, four, like that. And just to speed things up, Lion's turn, nothing's gonna happen. We're gonna go immediately into, we're gonna go immediately into Lizu and trigger that zone of death. So one, two, so three. Lizu is going to attempt to attack with uh, Fist and Tooth, but before that, the White Lion's gonna interrupt with a basic attack uh, with plus two speed. So he's gonna deal four attacks here, and it's gonna be at uh, plus one damage and uh, uh, what's his accuracy? His accuracy is, I believe, hitting on a two plus, but I gotta double now check that. Now the full that. rawhide set, there is some uh, evasion here. So uh, Li Zhu is gonna be hit on threes instead of twos. And of course, all four are going out. to hit. What is taking a bunch of damage here? So, oh, one of each. Um, I'm not gonna bother spending any survival to dodge any of that. Oh, uh, actually, nope, sorry. The body's gonna take two. So, Hmm. I am going to spend some survival to dodge one of the bodies here, and uh, basically I will lose the armor on the uh, the hands, the legs, and the chest, uh, but it means he is going to stay standing And Lizu up. will now get a chance to fight back, and he is going to fist and tooth the lion right in the face for, I think, zero hits, because I don't believe I have any accuracy on this one. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate. Amy will be up next, and she's just going to go one, two, three... And she's going to swing with the scrap sword into the blind spot this of the white line. speed lion. two, hitting on six pluses, five pluses because of the blind spot, and uh, plus two strength modifier. So that's going to be that's for a hit location. Hit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, we've gotten the trap already. So the attacker is doomed, so no survival can be spent here. Basic action against the attacker. And uh, yeah, lovely. So that's going to be uh, swinging, uh, swinging here at uh, Amy. Uh, it's going to be two hits. And it's going to hit her in the chest and the head. And on a level one white line, that's one damage apiece. So she is going to get knocked down because she's just got whacked in the head there. <laughs> but uh, wow, that's really unfortunate. Uh, and the white line does turn and around. And frankly, that serves me right for not taking advantage of the Rawhide Headband's ability to, uh, to take a look at the top two AI cards and uh, put them back in any order. So I'm gonna be careful about that going Next forward. Next up, Todd is gonna move forward and he's gonna take a whack at the white line as well. So get the scrap sword, needing fives, one hit right there. And the hit location, it's gonna be the fleshy gut. So this is plus two strength. Uh, so I'm gonna need, uh, he's toughness eight, so I'm gonna need sixes uh, to wound this guy. And uh, really hoping for a critical wound, but a wound just in general would be good. Nope. 
So instead, the white line's gonna turn around and do a basic action against Todd. Swinging twice, two hits. And Todd will take one on the waist and one on the head. So that is gonna knock Todd down like so. Uh, and yeah, that's that's not good. This is kind of a bad start here. Moving on to Zaphod, I think instead of, uh, ah, no, I gotta get in there. I gotta make an attack. So Zaphod's gonna move in there. He's gonna use Fist and Tooth. And he is going to hit once and with he a will be hitting in the scapular deltoid. So let's uh, let's hope for a wound here, needing a eight plus, I believe it is. Yeah, an eight plus. Hey, that's a wound. Okay, so there is no failure here, which is excellent. No critical either, um, but it does mean we are uh, getting rid of one of his wounds. So he is down one, and uh, yeah. So and with uh, oh, what is it? I think it's uh, nine more to go. Um, but that does. That does mean I've drawn some blood at this point. Uh, he will also use some survival to uh, encourage Amy to stand That's going to bring us to the Lions next turn, and we will draw a card, and we will get bat around. So the closest threat facing in range. So uh, the Unkillable Lee Zoo looks like he's the target there. And it's going to be a speed 2, accuracy 5+, plus, damage 1. And uh, yeah, so apparently um, we're going to suffer some brain damage as well, equal to the monster's level. Um, now he does have damage to take. So hitting on sixes. <laughs> and of course, both are going to hit. And it will be the waist and the chest. And uh, you know what? He's he's going to use his survival to uh, try and uh, dodge that again. And now uh, one thing I forgot is that uh, every time he uses survival, because he's got the rawhide full set on a six plus, he gets that survival back. So this is going to be the first dodge. Nope. And this dodge. Yes. So he will get that one back. So he is just going to take one damage to the waist, which uh, I believe he can uh, he can take rather easily. Yeah, so that's going to bring us to, I think, Amy's turn. And she's going to swing at the line from behind, uh, needing a 5-plus to hit. That's going to be one hit on an 8. And the hit location is going to be the elbow. So we're looking for, uh, we're looking for a 6-plus here, which we just barely got. So there's going to be no uh, failure reaction, no critical either. But that is another AI card gone from him. And I think what she's going to do, she's actually going to surge and do that again. Uh, so she's going to spend a survival to surge, take another swing at him. This time it's going to be two hits, which we're going to get the beast's paw and the soft belly. We're going to start with the soft belly because there's no reaction to this. So needing a six plus, which will wound on a seven. So that is another AI card gone. Uh, sadly, no critical. And then going to attempt the beast paw. So looking for a critical on this one as well because it would give me a lion's claw uh, as well as a persistent injury, which we won't wound it, but or we sorry, we won't crit, but you know what? We'll wound it, which means no reaction. And uh, there goes another card there. So she is whittling him away a bit, which is excellent. Uh, and I think what she might do... Uh, no, no, I, I think she's she's good at this point. Zaphod is going to use his uh, last survival, and he's going to get Todd to stand up. And then he will take a swing at, uh, at the white line using Fist and Tooth. And uh, let's see, in the rear right there... Uh, so that's going to need a seven to hit. So one hit and the hit location, the fuzzy groin. He's going right for it. So uh, looking for a nine or a 10 here to do a crit. Critical hit. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't be as excited about that as I am, but hey, you know what? Uh, lowbrow humor is lowbrow humor. So Zaphod has essentially just reached out and uh, gotten something uh, soft and fleshy there. Uh, creating a persistent injury, the lost Ding Dong. Uh, so basically, the lion is now going to do an extra point of damage on all of his attacks. And in addition, Zaphod now has a permanent priority target token, which basically means Zaphod is going to be the target of every single attack going forward until he is dead. Uh, so that lion is not happy at all. So I gotta try and finish this quickly now. That's gonna bring us to Todd, who, or actually no, we're gonna uh, do uh, Li Zhu the, un uh, the Unkillable first. And he's gonna use, um, yeah, he, he's gonna look at the top two, uh, top two uh, AI cards for the, uh, for the deck. 
and put them back in any order. So we're going to get the combo claw and we're going to get the mall here. Um, yeah, it's the AI cards. So uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep... Hmm. Hmm. We're going to put the mall on top and keep combo claw there. And then he is just going to move around like so. And we're going to go into Todd's turn. And Todd is just going to jump over to there. And he's going to take a swing with his scrap sword. And he's going to do uh, one hit. And he's going to hit the beast's heel. So we are looking for a six plus, which we failed to get, but there is that no reaction. to the lion's turn. And as we already know, we are going to be seeing Maul come up uh, right now. Uh, so basically what's going to happen is, uh, oh, let's see, victim of grab last round. Okay, can't happen because there was no grab. Closest knockdown survivor in range. Oh, no knockdown survivor. And that leaves him with, with no target. So uh, the white lion is actually just going to sniff. And uh, yeah, we've got to find out what the sniff does. So in this case, sniff is now basically making it so uh, anyone can be considered a target. But uh, we'll say the priority target is still on Zephod there. So we're going to move into the uh, we're going to move into the next turn. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, Li Zhu the Unkillable, and he's going to use his action again to take a look at the top two AI. And we're going to see Combo Claw, and we're going to see Lick Wounds. Now, we definitely want to get rid of Lick Wounds because we don't want that kicking around. So we're going to put that one on top. And he is then just going to move right over to there, I guess. And then we will have uh, Amy go in there and swing with her uh, bone sword. Getting two hits. Two hits? Uh, yeah, two hits. So we are going to hit the strange hand and the beast ribs. So this is excellent right here. So we're going to start with the, uh, the beast ribs because we want to make sure uh, we don't uh, have them attack back and end any of our actions. So needing a six plus, uh, sadly we don't have enough understanding to gain the survival on this one, but well, whatever. Nothing happens anyway on a one, so the beast ribs go away. Strange hand, now this is one we're definitely looking for a critical on, because it will uh, give her plus one strength, because I do have the survival to spend. Nada. And uh, he is going to turn around and do a basic attack against so hitting on a two plus. That's going to be two hits. And we are hitting the feet and the waist. Now, she's already lost her waist, so she just took light damage there. But that is the first on the feet, so light damage there. Todd is now going to go around to the blind spot of the lion. And he is going to attempt to hit it with the bone sword for one on a nine. So the hit location, we're going to get the beast small. And once again, we are looking for... Uh, we're looking for a uh, for a, a six plus to wound and hopefully getting a crit. Nada. So in this case, the monster roars triumphantly. Roll a d10 on a four plus. The attacker suffers one brain damage per monster level and is knocked down. So thankfully, no brain damage and not knocked down. So Todd is going to spend his last survival and he's actually going to surge and do this again. And on this case, only one is, actually no two are going to hit, because a six plus blind spot. So yeah, two hit. And we're going to see the ear, the beast's ear, and the beast. We're going to start by swinging at the beast's ear, looking for a six plus. And that will wound. Not a crit, but it is a wound, thankfully. Which means we did get rid of that lick wounds, which is excellent. And we're going to go into the beast's tail. So once again, looking for that six plus. And that's another wound. Somebody I can't remember if I've already done the attacks with Amy and uh, no yeah yeah ha Amy has attacked because uh, he turned around to, to swat at her that's right so uh, Zephod is just gonna move around to there and he is gonna fist and tooth for uh, absolutely no we're gonna see the lion's turn so the AI we have is gonna be bat around so in this case closest threat facing in range um, Hmm, okay, so I'm going to have to see how this interacts with priority token, because uh, Zephod should be the priority target. My understanding is that uh, with the priority token, the lion is going to move on to the closest threat in field of view, or sorry, or no, closest threat facing in range, um, or field in view. Hmm, 
So the priority target is not in range or in the field. Of, oh, I guess it is in field of view. Um, so he's going to swing at Zaphod, doing uh, two attacks, needing a five plus, which he will get successfully, and Zaphod has no uh, nothing to dodge with. And it'll be the Waste and the Noggin. And this is just one damage apiece, so he is knocked down. And uh, he will take one of the damage on the to the next turn. We're going to use uh, Li Zhu, the Unkillable's ability again. We're going to take a look at the uh, top two AI cards here, which is going to be Ground Fighting and Maul. And I think we're going to leave Ground Fighting... You know, we're going to put Ground Fighting on the top and hope that we can wound him. So we're going to have Todd move into the back here. And he is going to take a swing at, uh, at the White Lion. And we are going to see two hits. Excellent. So as long as we don't get the trap. So the beast brow. Oh. And the trap. So we ignore the beast brow. He's going to turn her around. And it's a doom. So no, uh, so no uh, survival to be used here. And he's going to swing at Todd twice. Needing two pluses, which both are going to hit. I'm gonna whack Todd in the hands and the chest. Thankfully, Todd, I don't believe has taken damage there, at least not according to my sheets, so hopefully I didn't miss anything. Uh, he's not too happy about that, but uh, it does unfortunately uh, it does unfortunately end uh, Todd's attack there. So we are gonna move on to Amy, and let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, she's just gonna go right there. And uh, she is going to swing with her sword. Uh, because of the uh, fuzzy groin critical, uh, he is taking two damage apiece there. So he is going to get knocked down because he's taking some so hit. Amy is going to swing, needing six pluses. Going to get one hit. Too bad that wasn't the blind spot. And we are going to pull the beast's ear. So looking at a six plus and uh, really hoping for, for a crit here. Nada. So what's going to happen is the white line is going to jump back. Without turning, move the monster one space directly away from the attacker. Boom! And he's going to knock into uh, Lizu the Unkillable. Uh, all of the attacks are uh, out of range at this point, so I can't even search. Yeah, he's going to knock uh, Lizu back five, so one, two, three, four, five, as well as knock him down. That's going to bring us into the Lion's turn, and unfortunately we were attempting to wound it because we knew that ground fighting was going to be coming into play. And uh, yeah, this one's going to be rather dangerous because as soon as I spend a, uh, an action to actually attack the Lion, uh, he is just going to get a free swing at me. Uh, so I'm going to have to be very careful about who does this. However, both uh, Zaphod and Todd and Li Zhu will get back up on the turn. And uh, Li Zhu is just going to move to there. Uh, and then he's going to use his ability to uh, take a look. Uh, no, he's not going to bother. So he's just going to hang out there. Uh, Todd is just going to... Sorry. Todd is going to go one, two, three, four, five. And uh, Zaphod is going to go one, two, three, four. And Amy, one, two, three. Uh, just like that. Uh, and just to save time, we're going to immediately go into the next turn. And, uh, hmm. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're just going to get everyone into place here, into position, into position and uh, figure out how we're going to go about so this. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to activate Li Zhu, and he's going to attempt to attack. So the white line is going to look at him, and he's going to perform a basic attack with plus two speed, so four attacks, hitting on threes because of the plus one evasion, and it's going to be dealing four damage apiece. So Li Zhu is not going to be happy if things uh, go uh, pear-shaped for him here. So that's going to be three hits, and... Oh, head, body, body. So, huh. I think uh, I think we're about to get our first fatality here. Uh, I'm going to... Hmm. I think I have a better chance surviving the body, so I'm going to dodge the head. Uh, on a 6+, plus, I get my survival back, which he does. Excellent. And we're going to see how well so he does on the body. We're going to find out what's going to happen to Li Zhu, the unkillable. Will he be killed? So in this case, we are looking uh, to roll high here. So the first one is a one. And there we go. We have our first fatality. Li Zhu, the unkillable, has been killed. So things are starting to look a little grim here. Um, actually, very grim here. 
So, uh, we are going to have to figure out what's happening here. And, uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to move Zaphod around to the back. And he's going to attempt to attack. And the white lion will then, uh, basically just zone of death me again. Which is not good for me. Uh, so, let's see what happens here. Uh, so that's going to be three hits. And Waste Noggin Noggin. So he's got nothing to dodge these things with. Uh, the And that is going to be severe injuries on all of them. For the two head wounds, we are looking at a two and a six. And an explosion! So, uh, yeah. Zaphod uh, did not even make it out of his first hunt. And he is now dead. So this is not looking very good for us. Uh, at all. So we're gonna, we're just gonna swing with Todd and uh, hope for the best, but the white line is going to swing back first. And once again, three hits. Waste, uh, waste head and uh, legs there. He's gonna dodge that, get that one out of the way. Uh, but uh, he is gonna get knocked down. Ooh, this is not ending well for me, I don't think. And uh, we will see what happens. For the legs, we have a 4, and the waist, we have a 10. So the 10, belly up. So uh, he's already knocked down, so we're okay right there. And for the legs, on a 4, we are looking at a dismembered leg. So uh, minus 2 permanent movement, and can no longer And dash. I think at this point, I, I can't risk it. Amy is going to, uh, to surge, because uh, there is a break in the ground fighting there. And uh, she is going to attempt to get in there and uh, you know, hope for the best and wound the line and get rid of this ground fighting. Uh, so that's going to be one hit. It's going to hit the sky for a six to wound. Oh, not only is it a wound, but it is a critical hit. So the line is going to get minus one movement token. And we are going to get rid of another AI card, which is excellent because it means uh, bat around is all that's left here. Uh, well, and ground fighting, I guess. Uh, but it gives us a little that bit of the last of her survival, so on her turn, she's just going to go into the rear she of the She's then going to take a swing at him, meaning fives to hit. One hit. Getting the beast's knee. And uh, hopefully, hey, I can add another uh, minus one movement token here. Uh, looking for a six to win. And got a six. So we get rid of an AI card. Two more wounds is all that's required to take this guy down. That is going to take us to the lion's turn, and he is going to... Well, we know he's probably going to turn around here. And we have bat around. Okay, that's good. That means we got rid of ground fighting. So it's going to be th closest threat facing in range, or closest threat in field of view. Oh, okay. So, um... Oh, okay. So this is interesting. So for this turn, I'm actually getting a bit of a reprieve. So he's going to sniff, uh, which means that uh, basically everyone is going to become a threat for next uh, for next turn here. But it does mean I'm getting a turn where I'm not getting batted around. Uh, so that's, that's actually by getting good. Todd up, and he's just going to move around there. And he's going to take a swing at the line, hoping for the best. He's going to get one hit, resulting in the beast's tail. Needing a 6+. plus, that will take us to the lion's churn. And uh, the last time he did activate, he was sniffing. So even though there's a blind spot, we do have some threats there. And he's going to take a swing at... Uh, oh, he's going to take a swing at Todd. He's going to need... Uh, no, he's going to take a swing at Amy. Needing three pluses. And that's going to be two hits. And it's going to be the chest and the hands. So the hand's going to take some light damage, uh, and the chest though, unfortunately, she has taken some damage there before, so she is going to get knocked down. That to Todd's turn, and he's going to wander around to the back of the line right there, and he's going to take a couple swings, needing fives. One hit, which is going to give us the strange hand, needing a six plus to wound. Bam! That's it. The lion goes down, and another hunt is successful. Sadly, though, we did lose Zephod as well as Lizu the Unkillable. But that is what happens with Kingdom Death. So we're going to find out what resources we've gained from this hunt. And then they're going to go back for to a successful White Lion hunt. We do get four of each resources. So for this, we get the Great Cat Bones. Great Cat Bones. 
Lion's Claw, now that's excellent. That means I can make the uh, the King's Spear. And Golden Whiskers, which is an organ. And for basic resources, we have the questionable thing. We have some more hide, some more hide, and some bone. So a uh, couple organs, so that it's gonna limit me a little bit on what I can make, but I do have plenty of resources to make some weapons, which is exactly what Medium I need. Medium is six plus. And not only is it a wound, it is a critical. Excellent. So there's going to be a minus one accuracy token, and this is the White Lion's Tail. So we're going to get a White Lion Tail resource as well. End of battle round. So basically one more hit, and we are out of the doghouse. And our two survivors are returning home to the settlement. Now, it has just dawned on me that uh, I think we missed a couple things in that last, uh, last fight. For one, Todd is uh, dismembered. So I think when he moved around to the rear of the lion, uh, he wouldn't have actually been able to move back there. So I can't quite remember if what he rolled was uh, only a hit considering the blind spot or not. Uh, but uh, ooh, early on the camera, uh, unfortunately mistakes were made and just gonna have to be a little bit An better. Additional reward for defeating the white lion is gonna be the Katarium being added to my settlement. So that is going to give me uh, the white lion gear, which is really good, uh, especially the king spear. So uh, yeah, maybe I'll be and able to as both Todd and Amy are coming home, they have both hit their age milestone, which is uh, actually going to give us the ability to do a weapon proficiency. Uh, in addition, uh, I'm going to roll 2d10 for each of them, and uh, they can potentially gain some uh, some permanent uh, stats. So for Amy, we are looking at oh, you know what I should. The white ones will be the tens. Ah, oh, nuts. I like that other one a lot more. Uh, so, two, she's going to gain one permanent evasion, and Todd will get, uh, let's see, six plus nine is going to be 15, so one random fighting art. fighting art is going to be the Timeless Eye. So, uh, if his attack is a perfect hit, oh, it's a perfect hit on a nine or a ten, uh, and cannot be used if he's blind. Now, of course, the cruel irony is is being dismembered. I'm probably not going to be taking Todd on very many hunts from now. They're going to move forward. I'm going to gain two endeavors, uh, which I can use for you know, not much, but going to take advantage of them. And we're going to update the time. As part of returning, we have the endless scream story event, where a scream pierces the silence around the settlement, and as the noise fades, a chorus of horror rises up in answer. Uh, so in this case, the settlement erupts into chaos, tr um, trying to comprehend the source of the terrible whale. So now, I am able to hunt the screaming antelope. Um, so, uh, you know, these two survivors now have uh, an additional query. In addition, I do have to uh, nominate a voice of reason. I think I'm going to give uh, the voice of reason to Amy. So she's going to gain uh, plus one courage, and uh, we're going to have an event. We'll roll a d10, find out what happens. On a four, the survivor realizes the noise is most likely from another strange creature that lives out in the darkness. After some, uh, after some effort, they manage to calm the settlement. The survivor gains plus one understanding, and returning survivors gain plus one Next insanity. Up, we draw a story event, or um, a timeline event, and we are going to get a nickname. So each returning survivor is going to get a nickname, so we'll start with Amy, who will become... So each returning survivor is going to get a nickname. So we'll start with Amy. Each who returning become, survivor is going to get a nickname. So we'll start with Amy, who will become, let's see, nine, wise, oh, hero, plus one permanent strength, and of the lantern. So wise hero of the lantern. And Todd will become, let's see, that is a six, so uh, <laughs> brainless. Howard, minus one permanent strength, and uh, of the lion. So he will be a brainless coward of the lion. In place, they will move forward. We will update the death count, which will actually uh, allow me to do a milestone here, uh, and we will get to choose a principle of death. So with the first deaths, I can choose either graves or cannibalize. So graves give all my new survivors one understanding and gives me some extra endeavors when people die. Cannibalize increases my survival limit, and I can get one basic resource whenever uh, one of my survivors is lost. Uh, I am gonna go with cannibalize, I think. So, in addition, yeah. I, re I roll a, de a d10 for the first harvest, and we will get a six. So, I nominate a survivor, frantically tears the corpse open, and drinks uh, deeply drinks its blood. 
they decide that every new creature they eat, they will become stronger. The survivor gains plus one permanent speed. So, um, oh, what the hell? Let's uh, let's have uh, Amy, the wise hero of the lantern, get one permanent and speed. And that'll bring us to the development stage of things. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend uh, an organ, a hide, and a bone. And I am going to able to draw a hovel and symposium. So either way, I'm getting plus one survival here. Uh, so let's see, Hovel, Departing Survivors, gain plus one settle, uh, survival. Okay, that's pretty good. Symposium, when Survivor innovates, draw two additional innovation cards to choose from. I'm going to go with Symposium, I think. And for our other endeavor, we are going to use uh, Augury, I think. So the Survivor endeavors to glean the meaning of existence. Roll on a table, add plus one to the roll result if understanding is three or higher. Uh, nobody has that. Um, but we're going to nominate, uh, oh, I guess, Todd. And Todd will roll a seven. So in this case, he's gained plus one survival. And with the resources I have on hand, I am going to uh, create uh, basically this gear. So I'm going to use three, uh, three hides to make a rawhide vest, rawhide headband, and rawhide gloves for some additional armor. I'm going to use a bone to make some bone darts just to take care of those traps. Uh, a couple organs to make some grease, monster grease for evasion. And then I'm going to use a uh, great cat bone and lion claw to make a king spear. And that's going to leave me with one monster hide, the lion testes, gold whiskers, and the great cat bones. So there we go. So that is going to be the, the end of the settlement phase. Uh, I am going to start preparing to depart. And I hopefully you guys will join along next time as our, survi uh, our survivors of Megarathea go back out into the darkness and discover what is out there in the world of Kingdom Death. So as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and uh, leave some comments below. Love to hear what your thoughts are. And as always, happy war.